to also pay tribute to him and all others. We are also in the middle of a time of civil unrest. I know this is not unfamiliar territory for our LGBTQ community. After all, it was just last year that we marked the 50th anniversary of the Stonewall Riots. And this is certainly not unfamiliar territory as it relates to race in America. In fact, sadly, it's all too common. I want every resident of this city to know that your city leadership, every elected official, our city team, our police officers, we grieve and feel anger, not over just the loss of George Floyd's life, but the racial injustice that is pervasive in our society. We too have had enough. But today, while mindful of all that is not right in the world, we must do what we always do in St. Pete, and that's to look ahead to brighter days. We won't be having a Pride Parade or Festival this year, but we will still celebrate, and there will still be a lot of pride in our community. Jim Nixon has been working with our community on an in initiative to light up our city in rainbow lighting, and you'll see that beginning tonight. We encourage you to look around, to take pictures, and share them on social media. We also encourage residents and businesses to display rainbow flags, and we will be distributing some to businesses as well, as we always do. And we have some other fun things planned throughout the month. So let's be clear. While the parade may have been canceled, we are not canceling pride. We are not canceling what pride represents. We are still all systems go for showing the world what St. Pete is all about. And at this point, I'd like to invent, uh, invite my friend, Nathan Brummer from St. Pete Pride to say a few words. Nathan. Thank you, Mayor Kreisman. And thank you to all of you who have, over the years, supported St. Pete Pride. All of our visitors to our beautiful city, all of our volunteers, our advertisers, our sponsors. Um, this was truly a remarkable year for the board and for the volunteers in making the toughest decision we've ever made as a result of COVID-19. But because of the importance of safety for our community members and, and frankly, the disparate impacts on, on health care for LGBTQ folks in this country, it was necessary to make this difficult decision. And as we gather at this moment to celebrate and kick off LGBTQ Pride Month here in St. Pete, we're at a critical moment, and as the mayor's remarks reflect, I too, as I sat and thought about this moment, it's a different Pride Month in acknowledging where we're at right now in this country. It's a moment to recognize our intergenerational trauma this country has faced, but our history, the anguish and the pain of systematic racism and our systems of power. But as we celebrate Pride Month and we celebrate the raising of this flag, I ask us to honor the history, the unity, and the hope of the LGBTQ movement. Our history is varied, whether we go all the way back to the Society for Human Rights, the pink triangle badge so many of us remember from the concentration camps, to the Stonewall riots that we discussed the history of last year at the flag raising, to marriage equality, and so many things in between, including the history of Larry Kramer, who we also lost recently. That's an important history to learn about, but there are often pieces of that history we've forgotten about. And we celebrate the mission of St. Pete Pride as we raise this flag, which is about promoting the unity and the visibility of our community. It's about raising all the voices within the LGBT community, including our black and brown and Native American, indigenous, people of color, Pacific Islanders, the entire rainbow of members of our community. And we have a history that unfortunately is fragmented and is also not often enough lifted up the voices of the most marginalized. But our mission with St. Pete Pride, the work we've done, the beginning of the Trans Pride March three years ago, the partnerships with the city, everything has been about elevating and holding our own organizations accountable to leading with an anti-racist lens. And we continue to do that work intersectionally. 
and most importantly in honoring the history that Harvey Milk created and reaching out to his friend Gilbert Baker to put this flag together. This, more than ever right now, is about hope for our entire country, for all of us who have been marginalized, who have been oppressed, who have been victims of the systems and the structures that exist in this country. We all come together and we feel that moment here in my beautiful city and I am so thankful for the community that we have here. But stay tuned. We have many more events that will come in the future when it's safe to do so. But in the meantime, please join me and join St. Pete Pride and join the city and all of our wonderful electeds here today in lifting up the voices of our history, of our unity, of our visibility, and of our hope. And let's all celebrate Pride every day. Well done, Nathan. Uh, next, I'd like to invite uh, Congressman Christ to say a few words. Congressman. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, good morning to you all. Um, this is such an important uh, recognition uh, for the LBGTQ community in our country, in our great city of St. Petersburg, the Sunshine City. Uh, and I commend you, Mayor and Council members, for continuing to move forward to lift this flag and make sure that all people in St. Petersburg, one of the friendliest places in the world, understand how important our uh, entire community is. Uh, we live in a beautiful place. Uh, we are truly blessed by God. And I believe that now more than ever, we need to pray to God for peace, for understanding, and for empathy for all people. After all, we are all children of God. Thank you so much. God bless you, man. All right, it is now time to raise this flag. If I may have folks from Pride to join me. behalf of the city, thank you all for coming out today and let's have a happy and safe Pride Month. Thank you. Nice and thank our great congressman.